Hey, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Josh Cook, and you've just heard the musical stylings of my sisters, uh, Catherine and Elizabeth Cook. Um, thank you for playing the morning show. Um, they have a show coming up tomorrow at what time? Nine. At oh, nine o'clock. Yeah. At nine p.m. at the VFW. Um, they'll play, be playing that song along with many others um, tomorrow at nine. Um, we're going to have them on later at the end of the show. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that performance and uh, about your entire histories. And um, cool. Thank you for opening us up. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. So we're going to go uh, straight into the weather, um, talk about what's happening weather-wise this week. Today, it's really sunny. Um, we're going to have a high of 81 degrees um, and a low of 53 tonight. And the rest of the week, it's going to be straight rain. Um, tomorrow, it's a 40% chance of showers and uh, some intense breezes with a high of 73. Um, that night will uh, also be raining, 80% chance of rain. Friday, 40% uh, chance of showers and... Saturday, and 80% chance of showers. So there are a lot of showers happening this week. Um, enjoy that Saturday. I should mention there is a chance of showers. <laughs> and on Sunday, we will also be having, it's going to be mostly sunny, but we will have a slight chance of showers. Uh, the high is 69 degrees. Cool, cool. Um, and that's going to be your weather for the week. Really sunny today, so enjoy it while you can. And then just a lot of uh, rain. And yeah, have fun. Um, so we're going to go straight into some news, some recent local news. Um, as you've probably noticed outside, if you're in Missoula, uh, it's pretty smoky out there already. Um, there are uh, wildfires already in Alberta, Canada. Um, more than 700,000 acres of land have been evacuated uh, due to wildfires. Um, so that's really a bummer. Uh, the government of Alberta said that at least two out-of-control wildfires are burning in the area. The Chuckeg Creek Wildfire and the Jackpot Creek Wildfire. Um, on the high level, uh, it's burned nearly 692,000 acres, while in Jackpot Creek, um, about 61,000 acres, uh, as stated by government officials. The fire started in late May just last month, um, pretty early as far as our wildfire season goes. Um, but hopefully the upcoming week of rain will help with that a little bit. Um, yeah, so hopefully those evacuations go well and the rain gets rid of some of the damages. Um, on a brighter note, this Saturday's morning Missoula Farmer's Market, it's been going on since May, but starting Tuesday night, the Tuesday Farmer's Market will have their first day of business. Um, the, the Missoula's farmer mar Farmer's Market uh, offers fresh produce, flowers, baked goods, and coffee, all made by local vendors. Um, and for, I think, the first time, they, um, they're they allowing uh, extra bang for your buck with uh, SNAP benefits. So if you have food stamps, um, you can redeem those for tokens at a table located in the market and then use those for vendors. Um, it's beneficial for customers who have SNAP benefits and also beneficial for the vendors who um, get compensation for that. They get extra money than they usually would. Um, so basically for each $10 that you would usually get for SNAP benefits, it has the buying power of an extra $10. And the vendors also get that benefit. Um, only produ produce, like fruits and vegetables, are eligible for the double SNAP program. Um, all other food items 
are eligible for the regular program. Um, so that'll be lim limited to fruits and vegetables. Um, and some other uh, not so great news. A Montana State University instructor and plant scientist has resigned after an internal investigation found uh, allegations of sexual harassment and proof uh, against students. Um, basically, it mentions, the, the article mentions uh, um, him talking to female students about their weight, uh, having boyfriends, or being married. Um, he was also having an affair with a student while being married. Um, so he was just wrong on all counts, and he got found out, which is a good thing. But um, he did a lot of bad things, basically was the gist of that story. Um, so he's gone. Good for them. Um, the investigation also found that, what's his name? Uh, his name is Budek. The investigation also found that Budek discriminated against students based on their disabilities, national origin, and religion. Whew, that's a lot. Um, he denied all allegations against him, but they, uh, they got him. They, they rooted him out. Um, and better news, again, Runner's Edge um, was recently, uh, last month, voted the, um, the best running store in America, 2019. Um, the store, which has charted several times before in the competition, placed ahead of more than 15,000 nominations. Other top contenders included companies with several locations operating in Baltimore and around Maryland. Um, there's a quote that says, there's amazing companies that have multiple stores. With our one store, we're able to focus on Missoula and what role we play here. And in Western Montana, that was uh, Anders Brooker, who opened Runner's Edge in 2001, um, which is really impressive because it's uh, kind of a small local business um, that uh, I haven't heard much about until then. Um, but it's one of the best running stores in America now. Um, and some interesting city news. Um, the, the city is running forward with some uh, plans to introduce e-bikes and uh, electronic scooters in Missoula. Um, there are proposals that are part of uh, revisions to s two city ordinances, one involving city parks and trails and the other on bicycle use. Uh, they're meant to update outdated ordinances as well as create rules governing the newer modes of transportation created by what are called e-bikes and e-scooters. While the biking ordinance covers the definition of three classes of e-bikes and the meat of the rules surrounding their use in the city park codes, a uh, public hearing on the bike ordinance is set for June 3rd, which was about a couple days ago. Um, and then there will be a June 17th hearing on the city park ordinance. Um, this also covers um, the use of adult beverages in city parks, um, trails and open spaces, and it lists 28 types of prohibited conduct. Um, and those range from blocking a trail to flying drones, which is, um, it seems like they're just trying to update their um, limitations according to new technology, um, new things that are coming to Missoula. Um, I'm sure drones are becoming a little bit of an issue with them, um, especially in city parks. Um, but, you know, you get some nice views there from our drones as Scott could tell you, because he's been flying his drone around uh, Missoula, um, around the bridge area, and we have some videos of that that I may show uh, Friday. But otherwise, that's our local news. Um, now we're just going to talk about some quick events real quick. Today at 10.30, they're having Tiny Tales and Family Story Time at um, the Missoula Public Library. Babies ages birth through three years of age are invited to attend and must be accompanied by an adult. Participants will sing songs, learn finger plays and nursery rhymes, and hear stories. 
This program is usually held downstairs in the large meeting room of Missoula Public Library. At 11.30, they're having hands-on science at Spectrum. The Spectrum Discovery Area is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. Uh, they are at 812 Tool Avenue. Um, it's 350 for anyone four and over. If they're under three, they get in for free. Uh, the theme is learning about how the body works and what makes you, you. Um, if you want to uh, get some more details on that specifically, you can visit MissoulaEvents.net. Um, coming up later today, also uh, the usual stuff at the Missoula Senior Center. They're playing Scrabble today at 12.30, and they're playing Bridge at 12.45. So as Scott usually says, if you want to destroy some old people, uh, go to the Missoula Senior Center and uh, play Bridge and Scrabble. Um, later on today, uh, middle school writers at 3.30 p.m. at Missoula Public Library, they will be um, inviting middle school students to uh, learn more about writing. Um, they... Uh, give good feedback, they play with words, and, according to this, eat a little chocolate. That sounds pretty great, honestly. Um, then, moving over to Thursday, um, they have open hours in the makerspace at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, Tiny Tales again at 10.30, as they usually do. And then, um, at 11 a.m., hands-on science, um, at Spectrum around the same time as today, 11 a.m., they will be talking about DNA and virtual reality. Um, oh, that's a good side note. If you ever want to use uh, virtual reality for free, we've got it here at MCAT, and you can give it a shot anytime. Um, they're having an Excel computer class at Missoula Public Library uh, tomorrow at 12 p.m., it's an introduction to the basic features of Microsoft Excel spreadsheet program designed for Windows environment. Um, topics include entering data and formulas and assumes the student has some experience with Windows and using a mouse. So it's pretty basic starting, but um, you can learn a lot more about spreadsheets and that can be really useful for you in the future. Um, tomorrow as well at 1245, they will have a uh, bridge at the Missoula Senior Center. Um, so, destroy old people. Lego Club tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Um, I actually used to do this. It's really fun. You go there. Um, let me check the age restrictions. Cause, um, ah, children under 12 must be accompanied by an adult. Um, but basically, it's... Um, it's in the Dragon Rug area, I believe on the second floor. Um, and it's just a great time for um, your kids to get together, hang out with other kids, uh, learn how to build fun new things. They just have like free reign over an entire table of various Lego blocks. Um, we have a similar thing here usually, um, which will be starting up in the fall. Um, we do drop-ins. Uh, where we have a lot of Legos and other um, stuff that we can use for stop-motion animation. So uh, starting again in the fall, don't have the exact date yet, but we will be starting Saturday drop-ins again. Um, so, oh, Downtown Tonight is happening tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. in Karis Park. Uh, it's a really fun event. They'll have a lot of vendors there, some live music, and it's really very fun. Um, so that covers most of your news and um, some important events that you should consider. Again, if you want to look at more events, it's MissoulaEvents.net. And um, they've got a full list. There's so many other events just constantly happening. You can pick a few out and have a great day. Um, so now I'd like to talk 
a little more about our website, mcat.org. Um, we have literally everything that you would need uh, to know about MCAT. We have new um, sheets that you can print out to sign up for being a producer here. Um, if you want to be a producer here, we always have a spot for you. You can use our equipment um, after going through a quick introduction. Um, but uh, we can tell you more about that if you visit our website. We're on channel 189, if you're watching this live, um, and channel 190. But if you want to watch those live online, you can click on the local live tab on the website, and you can see what we're doing. And you can also see um, a full list of what we'll be showing in the future. So again, talking about MCAT, I'd like to um, show you some of the things that are going to be coming up. Um, so I'd like to play you a quick advertisement um, by our own Austin Goosey um, that will show you uh, what's going on at MCAT this summer. So I'm going to switch over to that now. Hello! MCAT is offering four summer camps to kids who are interested in everything media. From stop animation documentary filmmaking to a full zombie feature film, your kids will learn how to make a movie from concept to filming and the editing process. We have counselors that will help your child's vision come to life, but they're only limited by their imagination. So, sign up by logging on to MCAT.org or stop by at 500 North Higgins Suite 105. What's up? So with me to my right, I have uh, Catherine Auger, who is one of the um, heads for Sunday Streets in Missoula. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what will be happening at Sunday Streets uh, on June 9th? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is a new event this year, and it's a partnership um, between Missoula in Motion, who hosts um, the Sunday Streets events, and then also Let's Move Missoula, um, who coordinates the unplug and play and promotes um, child activity, um, getting kids to get off their screens and outside and active for the summer. Um, so we combined those two community events with a new, um, a new event and it'll be a summer kickoff. There'll be plenty of free and low cost or free family activities in both Franklin Park and McLeod Park. And then we have a Sunday streets route, which means that the street is closed to cars, uh, but open up to people for biking and walking um, and a bunch of different activities too. So um, there will be a route between McLeod Park, which is over on North, and then Franklin Park, um, so that families and attendees can travel by bike or by foot um, from the two locations, and it will be closed to traffic. Okay, and that's uh, Grant Street. I understand. Yep. That so will the, be. Yeah, it um, will be from 10th Street, um, which is over by Franklin Park, okay. over to Grant, and then all the way down Grant until you get to North. So okay. it'll be mostly on Grant Street. Okay, and it says 30 free activities. That's right. right. Yeah, we have uh, um, a ton of different local um, organizations that are coming out to do act really fun activities for kids. So um, the YMCA and Parks and Rec are kind of. Um, taking the lead and coordinating a lot of activities. And then we have a bunch of others, um, like Missoula Fencing will be there, the Roller Derby Group, um, oh. and Freestone Climbing. Yeah, there's there's a ton. It's a lot. Are they going to have like actual climbing? Do they have a wall? Um, I'm not sure what they're bringing out. I haven't been in touch with them, um, but yeah, I think they're bring, bringing something out. They might have kind of like a small one that they set up. Um, so yeah, it should be really fun. Mismo Gymnastics will be there. Um, Spectrum Discovery, so yeah, a ton of okay. organizations. Um, most of them will be in the parks, but there will be some activities along the route as well. Okay, so would you say this is um, kind of an opportunity to uh, get to know some of these organizations as well? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of a little taste of what you get at, say, Spectrum Discovery mm -hmm. or the YMCA. Yeah, even. absolutely, yeah. 
Um, so we really encourage families to come out and to attend. Um, and then we really need the community's help to make this event happen. So it's Sunday, but we still need volunteers. Um, so the shifts are short, just two hours. And um, what we need help with is making sure that the road closure um, will be safe and uh, making sure that, um, yeah, if cars do need to access their house, we'll have volunteers escorting them out. So it'll be um, really mean, you know, being able to interact and do some activities with people as they um, travel between the two parks, but then also um, ensuring safety. Okay, yeah, so you're still looking for a lot of volunteers then. We are, yeah. So if you, you can go to MissoulaInMotion.com and sign up. Um, and yeah, it's not too late. It's this Sunday, a quick two-hour shift. Um, we could really use your help. Cool. Well, thank you for coming on to the yeah, show. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll keep people updated about that. Um, I'll make sure to mention it on Friday as well so cool. people don't forget. Thanks. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. And again, that's MissoulaInMotion.com. MissoulaInMotion.com, mm -hmm. where you can go and sign up to volunteer for this. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. That sounds like some good volunteer hours. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to throw it to a quick summer animation uh, to show you what you can do at some of our animation camps. And here you go. I'm such a rookie. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> um, that was a stop motion animation done by, uh, I believe that was done at one of our Saturday drop-ins this year. Um, but that's also something that you can do at, um, at one of these animation camps, though you'll have a lot more time during these camps to work on your animations, get them just right, just the way you want. Um, we have a few other instances of these videos that we can show you. Um, one of these that I've seen was actually a very impressive sprite animation, which we don't see a lot of, but we'd like to see a lot more of if you are interested. Um, this one is called Walking. And I will cut to it right now. Sweet, and honestly, that's um, some really impressive animation. And uh, most of the time, I just see, uh, keep seeing it getting better and better as uh, as we work with kids here during camps and drop-ins. Um, it's really interesting because every kid has a different interpretation of what they want to do with animation. Because, um, like you saw there, there's a sprite animation, different pictures put in order, which, well, that's just animation. Uh, you can do a lot here, though. Um, as you can see by this next clip, this is called Boa Constrictor, and this is done on whiteboard with a uh, marker. So here you go. All right, that was very quick, but also some really fluid animation in there. Um, so talking about these animation camps, um, we still have a good few spaces left um, in our camps. Um, we have five spots left in our time travelers camp where, <laughs> where kids... Sorry, I thought Neil was trying to punch me through the glass. Um, Time Travelers Camp is really, really incredibly cool. Uh, kids get to learn about um, some history at, I believe, the uh, Fort Missoula? Yeah, Fort Missoula. They go out there. They learn a lot about history. 
at the museum. The historic museum. They they'll take a yeah they'll take a trip to the fort, um, to the historic museum, and uh, they'll get kind of a um, a general feel for some history um, of Montana, of the world, and they produce media based on that. And we still have a lot of spaces open open for that. So five spaces specifically. So if you want uh, an amazing opportunity for your um, for your kid to learn some history and uh, make some incredible media based on it, um, please consider entering your child into this camp. All right. So um, a half day for that, a half day camp is $125, um, and full day is 200 So not too much of a difference between those, honestly. Um, the only full day camp is our zombie camp. Ooh, monsters. Yikes. Um, there's four spaces left in zombie camp. This is one of our other most interesting camps, um, although I would say... Time Traveler Camp is definitely a contender in that specific uh, battle. Um, so, Zombie Camp. This camp is amazing. Neil can attest to that. Neil loves zombies. I kind of like zombies. Um, but this involves a lot more makeup work. Um, kids can basically learn how to make zombies come to life. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, so there's four spaces left for that. You can make some really amazing zombie short films uh, during that time. Uh, that's a full day camp. Now, I should note that this is ages 14 and up only because it's zombies. Heckin' spooky. Uh, don't, don't let your child get scarred for life. Make sure that they're 14 and up. That's a full day camp. Um... Yeah, so all the half-day camps are $125. That includes Animation Camp 1, which we have one spot left. One spot. Make sure your kid gets that spot. Make sure. Or else it will be gone. And that would just be a real crummy juncture, wouldn't it? Um, and then uh, I should mention, it says on the website too, but Animation Camp 2 is already full. So, I mean, that's just another reason to get into Animation Camp 1. We only got one space left. Animation is really popular here. Um, uh, and there's so many different mediums that you can do it in. Um, also, I should mention that at some of these camps and also in the drop-ins, we sometimes do live-action videos as well, written by the children and acted by the children. So I would like to show one of those now, just an amazing video that I found here um, called my god I lost it never mind oh yeah I found it okay this is called vending trouble I believe this is done at one of our Saturday drop-ins but consider the following It, it blocks it too. Don't sass me, sister. Hey, wait for me. Hey, why are you wait for me? Oh. Why are you always following me? I don't know. It seems like you're going somewhere. 
fine, you can tag along, but give me a three foot radius. You know what's funny? What? Where do, does the, do the fish store the money? Where? On the river bank. Mm -hmm. climb this there's only if I had some sugar. Well I would have gotten you something if, uh, if the machine hadn't ate my money. That's stupid. Machines don't eat money. Ah oh, come on. Will you hurry up already? Uh, I'm on the Is that elevator here the whole time? It doesn't hurt if you take the stairs once in a while. No. Would it kill you to get a little bit of exercise? It would kill me. Why are we walking everywhere? Oh, well, it's your choice to follow me. Give me a break. I didn't know why you were gonna do this much walking. Uh, will it just be spring already? I'm bored. Come on. down the stairs, we'll already be where we need to be. Come on already. I'm going to go down the stairs my way. around. Uh -huh. Gravity doesn't burn calories. Uh, you just walked around the building to come back to this stupid vending machine. Yup. So that was a short film called Vending Troubles um, at, at one of our local drop-ins. I believe that was written entirely by those kids, and I love it. It was just great. Um, it's one of my favorite videos that I've seen this year because um, that kid is hilarious. Uh, so again, if you want to check out those uh, camps and sign up for your kids we've got some limited spaces left so and definitely the time travelers camp make sure you check that out so that your kid can travel through time we have five spots left on that so get them all you can uh it's mcat.org um where you can access literally just everything that we have um if you need help there's a tab called how do i uh, where you can check out summer camps, event recordings, and you can join or submit a program. And yes, we do need more producers. So if you're interested, mcat.org. Thank you very much. Um, so now I'd like to throw it over uh, to my left to uh, my two sisters, Catherine and Liz. Um, before you play us away, um, you guys have a show coming up tomorrow. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Nobody can hear you. That's okay. <laughs> now people can hear you. So, yeah, it's tomorrow at the VFW at 9 o'clock, and we're going to open for Double Dirty Ocelot. Is it the Double Dirty Ocelot? I think it's just I Double think this Dirty might be Ocelot. their debut. So, cool. Were you sending it for me? No. <laughs> it's just Should we talk louder? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I... I was speaking through hand signals, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, cool. Yep. What's the name of the people that you're opening for? 
the double dirty ocelot. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. at the VFW at nine. Can you tell us a little bit about your history playing music? Um, about what you've done in the past or? Uh, yeah, we just grew up playing music together. Same. With you also. Yeah, same. <laughs> and uh, we'd like to do it forever and ever. And we're starting to write more. This show will just be covers and a couple of originals. And then hopefully future shows will be all original. Very cool. All uh, entirely original soundtracks and whatnot. Do you guys think you'll get into recording anytime oh, soon? Oh, yeah. Oh. Nice. Recording <laughs> yes. original songs, maybe make an album. That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure I'm on it. That would yes. be pretty cool. With you. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you guys have worked with some uh, notable local Missoula musicians as well, right? Yes. Once upon a time. We Josh like Farmer before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen him around pretty, pretty recently, too. He, um, so you've worked with him. Uh, I don't know, name a few other people. We were in a band with Josh Farmer, Bethany Joyce, John Sporman, oh, yeah. Patrick Cook, your mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Patrick Cook, <laughs> brother. Uh, uh, called uh, Grandfather Glenn. Yeah, that's called Grandfather Glenn, and they are on YouTube. And they have some professional live recordings of um, Plain Gold Ring, right? Mm -hmm. That song? Yeah. Um, it's a really good video. You should check it out. Um, Grandfather Glenn on YouTube. Uh, is there any other place where people can check out your music and your musical stylings? Maybe a few recordings? Catherine's um, well Instagram. Our, our band name is Modesta. 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 And you can find it on YouTube by typing that in and then maybe typing in Sufjan Stevens next to it and then usually okay. a video will pop up. Yeah, you guys have uh, Sufjan Stevens covers? Yes, we do. We're going to play one for you right now. Oh, awesome. Okay. Are you ready for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the perfect transition. So take it away. Or My sisters playing Sufjan Stevens. This has been Wake Up Missoula. Thank you and good morning. Say 